you're a track day rider or even an amateur racer and you're looking for more data, this is the review to watch because we are taking a look at the Racebox Mini S. Now, you're probably already aware if you're a track day guy, just getting lap times can be difficult. Uh, you need a receiver to go with the track's transponder and you need to make sure that somebody's turned that thing on in the first place because they don't always do that. Uh, you've probably looked at apps carrying around a phone that's fairly expensive or buying just some separate GPS receiver gets a little complicated and frankly I don't think those apps work particularly well and I really don't like carrying a thousand dollar phone with me on the track. I don't think it's smart as far as cost goes. I don't think it's safe to have that on your body either. So in walks race box. So we're going to take a look at how they work on the track how the app works, how the website works, and give you our verdict. Stay tuned. Let's take a look at what we get when we order a Racebox Mini S. So inside this clamshell package, we have the main unit here, the receiver, uh, which is really self-contained. There's not a lot to it. You don't need to hook up any wires or anything. Um, there is just the one outlet for charging it, and it's a USB-C. And it does come with these little silicone plugs to keep dirt and debris out. Um, and it comes with a charging cable, of course. It actually comes with two of those plugs. And then the mounting. Uh, so there are four options for it. I went with the Velcro. Uh, this is recommended, they say if you have one vehicle, um, it's surprisingly adhesive. It's really good. Uh, we'll go over and look at the bike later. Um, there is this sticker pad, which if you're going to use the magnets that are built into this and just put it on a panel that is, uh, you know, ferrous, <laughs> so steel, uh, it's not going to work if you've got plastic or, uh, you know, carbon fiber or aluminum but this is meant to go on the back and protect your paint in case you're putting it on a steel panel, which of course we're not gonna do for motorcycles. And then there is a sticky pad. You know, in their videos, they show this going on a dashboard. Uh, that might be fine if it's you know, not gonna fall very far. Uh, and maybe it sticks really well. I don't know, I would, didn't really wanna trust that on a motorcycle. Velcro, I'm pretty happy with. Oh, and then lastly, there's this uh, quarter inch thread fastener. So uh, this is you know, compatible with a lot of different mounts. Um, I'm not sure how that would work with a GoPro mount or something like that, camera mount. Uh, but if that's your application, you can possibly use that. And then lastly, there's a little bit of instruction in here, but most of the useful information you're going to find by scanning this QR code. And they have some helpful videos to sort that out. So let's go and take a look at the bike and see how we mounted this on the tail. So this is my uh, SV650 track bike. And they say putting it on the tail is the best application for it. Also, the race box logo facing up because you want an unobstructed view to the sky. With that and then you want the uh, the input cable toward the back so let's put that on there now this surface isn't even completely flat it's fairly close to it but not completely but that that race box is on there that's not going anywhere I feel really confident having that on there let's take a look at the app that pairs with the race box mini s First, it'll log us in, and then we'll take it to the devices area. There it is. Um, it's got the information that I put in for my profile, uh, the bike that I'm using. That can change if you have different vehicles you want to use, um, and you could edit that. Right now, it's disconnected, so I'll connect it. However, we'll see that uh, light come on to tell us that it's connected. No fix tells us that we do not have a fixed position according to the GPS on this device. And the reason for that is simply because I'm indoors at the moment. Um, were I outdoors, it would have an idea where I was. And it would also 
know my proximity to a track. So things will be a little bit different for this review, but I'll explain how that wor all works. A uh, new drag session is simply an acceleration run. Uh, new track session, we'll go into that. We'll say no fix because, again, we have no fixed position. Um, you can create a custom track or drive without one. If it, Now it's telling you that it really doesn't know where the track is in proximity to you uh, because there isn't one and there's no fix. But when you're at the track, as I was, I was at the ridge in Shelton, Washington, and I was able to select the track and then a configuration of the track because there are a couple different ones. There's the long track, uh, one with the chicane and one without the chicane. So simply a matter of selecting your track and then you're ready to go. Uh, there's also standalone recording, which is actually smart enough to know if you are at the track or not. And so if it's one of the many tracks in its database, um, it will simply pick up your position, know you're there, and record accordingly. So I did that uh, to test it out, and I got just as good a data either way. So you can go either direction. I would <laughs> just select the track session, you know, because it's there. But either way, it'll work for you. So uh, you can just hit, hit start recording, and you don't have to hurry. You don't have to start recording while you're right at the track. You can do it from the paddock. It really doesn't matter. It'll interpret the data properly regardless. So uh, that's what would happen there if we were to start recording. Let's go back and we'll look at the data. So we'll just simply hit the track. Uh, let's look at our fastest session, my 2.11. Uh, really interesting thing here, theoretical best, uh, meaning the best sector times. Uh, there are four sectors of this track. If I were to have stitched my best sectors all together, I would theoretically get a 2.850, uh, chopping over three seconds off my time, which is not insignificant, right? That's a ton. So um, good and bad there, good. I have potential to be that fast at least, and bad, I am not consistent enough to get close to my theoretical best, but I'll, I'll choose to look at it positively. Uh, we have our min and max speed, uh, 24 seems really slow to you, there is a really tight turn and we'll take a look at the, the data to show you there. Uh, max acceleration and cornering G's, uh, the max acceleration is telling you your acceleration forward but also your negative acceleration which is your braking. And then the cornering G is really insignificant for our purposes of, on a motorcycle. But if you're doing uh, a track day with your car, that's good information to have. So uh, we'll dig into that in a little bit here. So let's click on our fast lap. You can see our track view here drawing. Um, and then a bunch of wave data, essentially. So we've got our speed acceleration Gs, which is, again, some of them are positive, some of them are negative values, uh, positive for acceleration, negative for braking, and then lean. Uh, one direction above the center line is going to be for, let's tap on that, so you actually see zero there. Uh, so we see that one direction is for left and the other direction is for right, depending on whether you're above or below the zero there. So at this particular this particular area, I was turning right and at 41 degrees of lean angle. If we look at the acceleration, now this is actually the smooth data, which I definitely recommend. So let's zoom in on that a little bit. So if you don't smooth the data, and I'll get into how to do that in a little bit, this is really jagged to the point where it's a, basically just a thick line that uh, doesn't give you as accurate of data. So this is telling you, okay, I was, uh, I was breaking to this point, accelerating, you get the picture. The speed really tells that story. So personally, I prefer the speed and the lean angle information. 
to tell me more about my writing. So I'll get into that a little bit in the web app. But you can see all pretty much the same thing uh, on the app that you can see on the web. And actually, there's a little bit more that you can see. So let's look at the settings here. Definitely we want bike mode to be on. That's the difference between showing you the cornering G's and the lean angle. Um, the map type, race box, I prefer the drawing to the photo of the, of the, the aerial photo of the track. Uh, smoothing on the G-forces, as I mentioned. We'll turn that off and I'll take you through that. And, okay, we want the overlay as well for the lean angle. Yeah, so this is what, when we look at green, <laughs> how noisy the data can be. And this isn't me chopping the throttle on and off constantly. This is just the way it comes. <laughs> so I may not be smooth, but I'm definitely not that uh, unsmooth either. So let's turn that back on. All right, so one of the cool things about this is you can compare laps. Uh, so it's automatically selected this lap here, this 212.30. We could look at any of them. I can pick 213, which is basically a 214 there. And as we scroll through the data, you can see, obviously, they're starting at the same point. But this is the area where I lost a fair bit of time, uh, even on my fast lap. So we see that the, the, uh, the red is my slower lap, the blue is my fast lap. You can see the bigger the gap gets there, the more time I've lost in that area. So I just did not handle this well at all on my uh, essentially 214 lap. And uh, what's also cool is you can compare different laps from different sessions even. So if we hit the uh, compare, we'll go up here, add from another session. So we've picked that other session. So now I can compare my 211.67 with say my 212.67. And there are, there are areas where I'm actually, you know, I can see where I lost a little time there. I can see that my speed at this point on the track was significantly less, five miles per hour less top speed on that little short straight. And by the way, if you're wondering where the 24 miles per hour comes, that's, that is a really tight turn right there. All right, so that's a look at the app. Let's take a look at the Racebox website. So this is a way for you to analyze your data in between sessions if you want to on a laptop uh, instead of the app or you know, later when you get home. Uh, it's, this is pretty interesting in my opinion. So we have, uh, we've logged in here and we'll go over to my sessions. These are all the sessions available. I've got my two from the Ridge. So we'll click on my fast one. I'm try to learn from that. Uh, fast in quotation marks because I'm not that fast. Let's scroll down here so we can get a better look at it. So, yeah, it tells you where we were. Uh, my best lap, it automatically goes to your best lap of that session. But if you want to analyze another lap, you can, you know, go through here and figure out which ones you want to look at. Um, we'll go through all this info in the summary on the left. Um, so your, your, a lot of your peak information, basically. And then the uh, sector times, uh, as you can see with the blue lines here and then the start finish, uh, it's divided into four sections. Um, so we see each of those sector times. Now if we go up to the upper right uh, and these little icons here, uh, this is a map to show you the Google Maps if you want. Um, I think that adds more noise than information personally, so I like to have that off. Uh, we've got your units. If you prefer to have uh, metric, you can switch over to metric. I do not. And then this one is pretty interesting. This is kind of where the data is different for motorcycles than it is for cars. And if, you're, if you want to look at it for a car, you're going to not have a lean angle, that doesn't make any sense, right? That's not really applicable. So you'd want your cornering Gs. But we're gonna have the cornering angle, that's most relevant to us. Uh, with this, you know, you can share 
Uh, if you want to you know, compare your data with other people who um, have a Racebox account, you can do that. Here you can download your session. You can do it in uh, any of these formats here. Um, so far I've, I've downloaded some CSV um, for video overlays and we'll get into that later. Um, but that's just a spreadsheet that downloads and you can import that into another program later. All right, so the map itself. Um, of course, there's the ridge. We use the chicane on this one. There is also a setting for this track if you were to use it without the chicane. So that, that is, of course, relevant. And then we have the timeline at the bottom. So our speed on the left axis, our time on the right, excuse me, our time on the bottom, lean angle on the right, um, negative and positive basically is you know, one side or the other. So um, as we drag our cursor uh, from the beginning across here, we see the little red dot going through there. So as you can see, I'm tipping it into the left, uh, which registers as a negative lean angle value on this. Uh, it might be kind of cool if they adjusted that, I think, to have a left and a right lean angle. I think that'd be a lot more intuitive than negative and positive lean angle. Uh, but that is what it is, at least at this moment. So that would be my recommendation to them. Um, so as we drag through here, we can see that we have, also we have these three different lines. So let's look at the legend here. We got speed in red, acceleration and braking in, in green, lean angle in blue. And as you see, you can turn any of those off. So if you just wanna look at, I think it's helpful to just look at two at a time um, until my brain registers 3D. Two is sufficient for, for my capacity. And you can see what, how our speed and acceleration and braking correlate. What I really found most instructive though is lean angle versus speed. And uh, I won't take you through the whole lap of my analysis here, but uh, I will look at this corner right here. So this is a very long left corner. Uh, this gives you plenty of time to really dial in your speed and lean angle and make adjustments. And let's zoom in on that. So if we control and scroll, we can see that in sort of a higher resolution. So my speed, my lean angle, more or less the same. I kind of, you know, adjust here and there. But what I think is most fascinating here is that at this point, I've picked up throttle. I started to add throttle here. I'm adding speed, but my lean angle is the same as I hit the uh, that apex there. So this is a kind of a funky corner. It's not as constant radius as it uh, may look in the map. But anyhow, what we see here is I've got a lean angle of about 44 degrees and a speed of 64 miles per hour, which tells me this whole time that I've maintained this lean angle of somewhere between 42 and 44 uh, degrees, I could have had that, that speed that entire time. So I could have been going 64 through this entire corner and that would have saved me a lot of time. So that's something uh, I plan to look at uh, between sessions at my next track day, see where I can pick up time there. Um, and also there's just some little things here, like this should be very smooth, right? Uh, there shouldn't be this little hump here uh, because there's really nothing happening on the track if you look up at that area. So there's little things like that. Hey, it could be smoother. Um, I could carry much more speed. So that's what I would be looking at my next time out. How can I uh, make sure that I'm carrying more speed through there? So that's uh, an overview of the Racebox website. The ability to export data from Racebox has a lot of potential. And one of those applications that you could use with that is to create uh, visualizations of your data as overlays on your video. Now, with just a basic GoPro sticker, you get speed, you get your position on the track, but as far as we're concerned with motorcycles, that's really all that it gets you. Um, so this has the potential for so much more, including lap time and lean angle, which I think are really valuable tools. So 
what we're looking at here is the uh, free version of Race Render. So that is one of the programs that Racebox recommends as being most compatible with their data. So you simply download a CSV uh, from Racebox and then import that into Race Render along with your video. So we can see that this GX file here is my GoPro. We've got the Racebox track session data for a, the particular session. The really cumbersome thing about this is synchronizing the data from Racebox with the video from GoPro. So you have to manually go ahead and do that. And so for instance, I found the frame where I was going across the start finish line. I found the data where I was crossing it on the same exact lap, same exact session. And then even then, when, once all synchronized, um, what we have a problem with here is that the lean angle. And that was, that was an arduous task even getting to that because that takes the G-force data uh, so not only do you have to rename it lean angle instead of g-force, you have to set your range for your negative and positive uh, because the, it wants to start at two, negative two and two. And then you have to reverse that. So left is left and right is right. You're getting the picture, right? <laughs> and even, even after getting that all to work out, it doesn't work. Um, the lean angle is not synchronized with the rest of the data. So as you can see here, maybe kind of, sort of, it looks like it is, but it's really not. So as we lean into this, I'm dragging a knee, and you wouldn't know it from the lean angle. And no, I'm not leaning to the left as I come around this right corner. So it's pretty bogus, and that's unfortunate because, you know, bad data is worse than no data, right? So. Unfortunately, that is not a compatible thing and not worth uh, the time it takes to get there. Um, I worked on this for quite a while and I'll save you the time and, and aggravation. Maybe it'll be better in the future and I hope so. But for the meantime, it's not a feature that's really ready for prime time. So overall, I am really pleased with the Racebox Mini S. It works as advertised. If there is one small gripe, I guess it would be, and it's really not their fault, uh, the ability to overlay that onto video could be a lot easier, but that's not really their business at this point, so I can't really fault them for that. It acquires the data, it's easy to look at, there's a lot to learn from. I can't wait to get to my next day on the track and try this out again. Thanks for coming.